Welcome to this lecture on digital communication using GNU radio. My name is Kumar Appaya and I belong to the Department of Electrical Engineering, IIT Bombay. This lecture will be a continuation of our introduction to error control codes, in particular block codes. In the previous lecture, we have discussed parity check codes. If you recall, in the case of a parity check code, we essentially added one bit of overhead for a single parity check code that is where the whole code becomes an even parity code meaning that after adding the redundancy the number of ones in the coded bit vector was essentially even or if you want to look at it from the XOR perspective if you XOR all the bits of the coded code word you will essentially get zero. We saw that you could make you could essentially you know detect the presence of no errors if there were no errors and if there was a single error you can detect that single error and therefore discard that particular code block. But if there is there are two errors or more errors then the code essentially fails and you will end up making mistakes. We will now continue our discussion with a different class of code words. So in today's discussion we are going to now look at the repetition code. The repetition code, we will restrict our consideration to an odd repetition code. Essentially, you repeat bits odd number of times. Of course, you can do it even number of times, but we are going to restrict it to odd number of times. The reason is because if you repeat a bit an odd number of times, you can then at the receiver just use majority logic to decode as we will see. Let us take the simplest example of a 3-1 repetition code. When we say 3, 1, that means the number of coded bits is 3 for every information bit which is 1, 1 information bit. That means that you are essentially taking 1 bit and sending 3 bits coded. So this is actually a code that is very inefficient in the sense that you are essentially reducing the bit rate by one third, <coughs> bit rate to one third rather because you are reducing the bit rate from 1 to one third you can detect and correct one bit error. Unlike the parity check code, you can detect a single bit error and correct it also. Okay, How? So let us actually have a small discussion. Let us say we say always the repetition code is of the form, let's, uh, in this case 3, 1, we can say n 1 repetition code. Okay. We just repeat every information bit n times rate 1 upon n. The rate is 1 upon n, redundancy or overhead whatever you wish to call it is n minus 1 upon n, 1 minus 1 upon n. How does this work? Let us take the 3, 1 repetition code and let us take the way we do it, let us take information bits zero, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, enough I think because the coded bits will be very uh, long in nature. So I am going to write 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, and 1. 3, 1 repetition code, what will it do? Repeat this 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, and we will say 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now let us say we add a BSC noise realization. That is we toss the uh, toss a biased coin with probability p and uh, you know we just write down the noise sequence. Let us say this 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. These are the noise sequences. Remember, it is a block code, so we take blocks of 3 and make a decision. What is the method? Essentially, find out the correct code word. What are our code words? 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. These are the code words. So let us take the first one. 0, 0, 0 
but we get 0, 0, 1 because 0 plus 1 is 1. Now, one thing which is very clear is that the code words are 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1. And if you don't get either of these, then something wrong has occurred. In this case, we get 0, 0, 1. What happens? It is neither 0, 0, 0 nor is it 1, 1, 1. So what is the conclusion that we have to draw? Typically, the number of errors that occurs is minimum. This is something we will talk about formally. But the most likely error sequence is 0, 0, 0. No error, no error, no error. That is the most likely error sequence because 1 minus p the whole cube is the most likely error event. Why is that the case? Let's just think about it. See, we said 0 less than or equal to p and we say less than half. What is the most likely sequence of errors? So let's say if there are three sequences, let's say no error, no error, no error has probability 1 minus p the whole cube. 1 minus p the whole cube is essentially where p is less than half, this is a number more than half. Okay. Any other bit sequence such as 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1 will have probability 3p times, sorry, uh, p times 1 minus p the whole square. Now p times 1 minus p the whole square is obviously going to be smaller than 1 minus p the whole cube. Okay, so maybe I'll just write this again. Probability of error is equal to p. Probability of error in block of 3. Probability of, let's say, I'll write this more carefully of 1 error in a block of 3 is when you have a block of three binary symmetric channel realizations, you can have error in the first, error in the second, error in the third. Okay, so then you are going to have, let's say, uh, uh, you know, I'll write them separately. P into one minus P the whole square. One minus P into P to one minus P, and one minus P the whole square times P. These three are separate, and of course you have to add them if you want to find one error. But the probability of having, but each of these, let's say, okay, p into 1 minus p the whole square. This is less than or equal to 1 minus p the whole cube. Why? Because if you take away 1 minus p the whole square, 1 minus p the whole square is essentially common. There is p and 1 minus p. If p is less than half, then this is true for each of these, okay. This means that if you want to find the maximum likelihood, you know, uh, event that occurs, the maximum likelihood event is the one where there is no error. Therefore, you want to find out the case where, you know, you want to essentially guess that there is no error. But in this case, when 0, 0, 1 has occurred, then the most likely occurrence is that there was one error. Of course, you could say that, you know, there is some other event, something, no, it could be, could not be. But in this case, the most likely occurrence is there is one error. Now, the next thing we have to do is, you got 0, 0, 1. There are multiple ways you can get 0, 0, 1. For example, you could have sent 1, 1, 1 and the first one and second one got shifted, flipped to 0 and 0. But that corresponds to two errors. But if you send 0, 0, 0 and only the last one got flipped, that corresponds to one error. Now again, one error, if you look at the two errors, that is going to be p square into 1 minus p, p into 1 minus p into p, 1 minus p into p square. These are the errors of the first, uh, error in the first two, first and last and last two. This is even smaller than the above one. Like the probability of having no errors is the highest, but if you do have an error, the probability that one error has occurred is much higher than the probability that two errors have occurred. In other words, over here, the most likely occurrence that had happened was that you sent 0, 0, 0, but you ended up getting 0, 0, 1. And the less likely occurrence was that you sent 1, 1, 0, and the first two got flipped and you got 0, 0, 1. Because if you sent 0, 0, 0, and you got 0, 0, 1, what is the probability that this is actually what happened if you write your base and all those? Sending 0, 0, 0, getting 0, 0, 1, probability is p times 1 minus 1 minus p the whole square, that is this one. 
Sending 1, 1, 1, getting 0, 0, 1, probability is p square times 1 minus p. And since our p is less than half, it is safe to conclude that the more likely was that 1, 0, 0, 0 was sent. And since 0, 0, 0 was sent, we will say the information bit is 0. Okay. It is not because the first bit is 0. So there are more zeros, therefore 0. Over here again, we are going to get 1, 0, 1. Again, 1, 0, 1 is not a code word. 0, 0, 0 is a code word. 1, 1, 1 is a code word. 1, 0, 1 is not a code word. What are the two possible occurrences that could, what are the possible occurrences that could have happened? You could have sent 0, 0, 0. The first and the last bits got flipped. Probability of that happening is p square times 1 minus p. Or only the middle bit got flipped. Probability of that happening is p times 1 minus p the whole square. That is more likely because p is less than half. So in this case, use my, again, it boils down to majority logic, 1 was sent. Can you guess what happens in this case? You get 0, 1, 0. It's the same as the previous. You get 0. In this case, no errors. So directly conclude this as 0. In this case, however, something interesting happens. When you send 1, 1, 1 and the noise pattern is 1, 1, 0, that is the first two bits get flipped, you get 0, 0, 1. So now over here, there is a problem because your maximum likelihood type of detection says, I will assume minimum bits got flipped. So what is that code word for which I have to flip the minimum number of bits to get 0, 0, 1, obviously 0, 0, 0. So here you will make a mistake. Here you will make an error in spite of using the repetition code, right? Because your repetition code, what it says is, if you now flip more than one bit, Okay, 0 bits and 1 bit is okay. Out of 3, if you flip more than 1 bit, if you flip 2 or 3, I am making an error. Over here again, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, majority logic 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, I will just write 1, 1, here also I will write 1. Okay. So this is where an error has occurred. So what has happened? If you now compare the original bit stream, this 0 is correct, this 1 is correct, then there are two zeros, both are correct, then there is 1, unfortunately there is a mistake. Then 0, 1, 1, these are correct. An error occurs when 2 or 3 bits are flipped in a block of 3 bits. Okay. So let us now compare. Okay. BSC, if you just use uncoded, the error probability for every bit is P. But if you use 3, 1 repetition code, each bit is repeated three times. So in a block of three, you need two or more errors. So let us say, okay, I should not, uh, sorry. Equal to two errors greater than or equal to 2 errors in a block of 3. That is, if you have 3 binary symmetric channel realizations, you must have at least 2 errors. So for that, if you want exactly 2 errors, that is 3 p square times 1 minus p plus 3 errors, 1 minus p the whole cube. So let us actually calculate this. Let us say p is 0.1. Let us say I will do I will do an example. So example p is actually 1 by 10. BSC of p error probability is 1 by 10 because every information bit has a 1 tenth probability of getting flipped. Now 3, 1 repetition code, when will you make an error? When 2 or more bits are flipped, okay. You, that is error probability is equal to 3 p square, 3 by 10 square times 
9 by 10 ah oh, this is i actually i'm sorry i made a mistake here let me correct it i'm so sorry this should be p square 3 p square into 1 minus p plus p cube uh, actually 3 errors is p cube okay so plus 1 by 10 cube if you evaluate this carefully you will get 27 plus 1 by 1000 this is approximately 0 0.03 if i am not mistaken so from 0 0.1 you have reduced it to 0 0.03 in fact precisely it will be 0 0.028 so, you have actually reduced the error probability significantly. If you now expand to let us say, uh, let us say you have a 5 1 repetition code. In the case of a 5 1 repetition code, you are now going to have a different scenario. You are going to now take majority logic over 5. You are going to have errors with three or more bit flips among 5 bits, 5 coded bits. So, you can evaluate the probability, it will be, uh, it, you know, it will be 5 choose 3 p cube times 1 minus p the whole square plus 5 choose 4 times p power 4 and you can evaluate all this, this will be even lesser because the leading term is essentially over here, it is p cube, okay. If you look over here, right p square was the leading term, 3 p square, okay. So, you can actually approximate this as approximately 3 p square, okay. Similarly, over there, you will have something like 5 choose, uh, I believe 5 choose 3 times p cube or so on, okay. So, whenever p is a small number like 0.1 or something, using a repetition code significantly reduces the error probability. So, the probability of making a bit error is 3 p square times 1 minus p plus p cube. In this case, approximately 3 p square. We just showed that it is much lower than p, okay. Now, the key issue is that the rate for an n1 repetition code is 1 upon n and thus it is very inefficient because you got the benefit of correcting, you know, uh, uh, you know, like in the case of 3 1, you can correct 1 error. In the case of 5 1, you can connect, correct 2 errors. In the case of 7 1, you can correct 3 errors, but the price you pay is that for every increase by, you know, you, the rate becomes 1 third from 1 third to become 1 fifth or 1 seventh. So, the repetition code is very useful in scenarios where you have to just, you know, send with great reliability and you have a very simple decoding logic that is at the receiver, all you need to do is check the majority. Let us say you take a block of n bits, which is n is an odd number. Just check if the number of zeros is more or ones is more and just conclude that that is what you have. So, given that that is the case, the use of a repetition code is very useful. It's, it's uh, very simple to implement, but the price you pay is that the data rate becomes very, very low. And in extreme scenarios where you have a very poor signal to noise ratio, very high, you know, P is very close to 5, then use of repetition code may be very useful. But in practical scenarios, there are better codes that are available. So, one thing that we will see from uh, in the coming lectures is what more efficient codes, uh, what more efficient codes there are which you can use. So, in the next lecture, we are going to introduce the concept of linear block codes and then go towards Hamming codes. Thank you.